There have been loads of physics teachers, YouTubers, buzzkill parents, and scientists who love to poke fun at the legend of Santa Claus. They say, reindeer can't fly. They say, he'd have to travel 650 miles per second to visit the whole world in the time allotted. So fast he'd be killed by air resistance. But that's no fun. For this video, we will take as fact that Santa is real and attempt to describe how he successfully delivers presents to all the good little children. Welcome to Bad Astra. Fine, now let's get to the science content. And it's exactly what it sounds like. Oh, we need to talk about polyamory. I'm secretly a black hole. Do they finally need me to captain a starship? Yeah, yeah honey, that makes perfect sense. Isn't physics fun? Further study is needed. To start, we'll need to review what we know about Santa and make some basic assumptions. Since Santa clearly has access to NSA level information and surveillance networks and an incredibly efficient supply chain, it's not a far leap to assume that Santa has engineering technology beyond our comprehension. We already acknowledge that the US military is decades ahead of public knowledge in many technological fields due to their abundant resources. Clearly, Santa also has vast resources at his disposal. We can therefore assume that the only real limits to Santa are theoretical, rather than a result of humanity's current engineering capabilities. We also know that our observations of Santa appear to conflict. Therefore, we'll assume that much of our idea of Santa is flawed, in the way that astronomical observations can be interpreted incorrectly. Stars that look super close together in Earth's night sky may be separated by thousands of light years. What appears to be a dust cloud in visible light could reveal a pulsar in the X-ray and radio. Feasibly, a reindeer could be really advanced robot jets which only look like animals from certain angles and distances. Rudolph's famous nose may be an added red high beam. The elves working at the North Pole may only be a small piece of a worldwide manufacturing operation. Whether Santa enters houses through chimneys, windows, doors, or even at all is unknown, as there's loads of conflicting data. We also know that Santa only serves children. Specifically, those who believe in him are judged as good and receive presents. This rules out most non-American and non-Christian children, since with few exceptions, Santa is an American myth accepted by several sects of Christianity. Other majority Christian countries have different Christmas-related myths, and in many countries, the majority population doesn't celebrate Christmas at all. Since only children who specifically believe in Santa receive presents from Santa, we can assume that even the best-behaved kids who live outside America and or don't celebrate Christmas do not get a visit from the jolly old elf. Obviously, there will be many non-Christian and or non-American children who believe in Santa. I was one of them but we'll assume that those numbers are low enough to be offset by American Christian children who don't believe in Santa or badly behaved children. But please leave a comment if I'm wrong about this. Globalization may have spread American culture farther than I realize. A 2018 study showed that the average age a child stopped believing in Santa was around eight years old. I couldn't find the number of American children under eight upon an initial Google search, and I didn't want to do too many searches of children under eight in the US since I already have nuclear bomb diagram in my search history this month. But according to childstats.gov, there are around 48.8 million children under 11 in the US divided evenly between ages zero to five and six to 11. So I'll assume that there's no sharp difference between ages and calculate approximately 35.5 million American Santa age children. Roughly two thirds of American adults identify as Christian, according to the census. And for the sake of easy math, let's assume Santa age children are usually the same religion as their parents and are evenly distributed among different faiths. So Santa serves around 23.7 million children. Since child having mothers have 2.4 children on average, those children are spread across around 9.87 million households. We're assuming that the bad Christian children are canceled out by the good non-Christian Santa believers because I really don't wanna to try to quantify naughty or nice or non-Christian Santa beliefs. And let's round to 10 million, because at this point we've lost any right to significant figures. 
We also believe Santa delivers all presents on Christmas Eve night, after dark Eastern and before sunrise on the Pacific coast. In 14 dark hours per time zone, or 17 total dark hours across all contiguous U.S. time zones, that's 612 microseconds, or 0.000612 seconds per house. If we include Alaska, Hawaii, and Puerto Rico, Santa gets 20 dark hours, and 720 microseconds per house. But that's unweighted for population and likely overestimates the median time due to the lower density time zones. Fun side note, half of Alaska shares a time zone with Hawaii. So our assumptions are, one, Santa is real. Two, Santa's technology is incredibly advanced and he is only bound by theoretical constraints rather than engineering ones. Three, our specific observations of Santa are contradictory and incomplete. Four, Santa serves around 10 million households. Five, Santa averages less than a millisecond per house. So what are some theories out there? I went to the internet and it did not disappoint. Two words, quantum reindeer. Quora users are a gift. Some guy named Dave Larson theorized that Santa had quantum reindeer and can travel back in time between visiting each house. Santa's actual visit duration might be however long he needs, but then he travels back in time, so each visitation could be just a few hundred microseconds after the previous delivery started. Larson goes on to solve this issue with multidimensional Santa reflections, which is where he loses my ability to keep a straight face. None of the technical sounding terms he used were real, but his post was hilarious and excellent Santa sci-fi. But physics doesn't rule out time travel for Santa. One fun feature of general relativity is that it connects space and time. You have likely heard before on this channel that nothing can go faster than the speed of light. But that isn't the full story. The speed of light isn't just a maximum, it's a minimum. Everything in the universe, you included, is currently traveling at the speed of light. Just not through space, through space-time. People assume that time is a strict progression of cause to effect, but actually, from a non-linear, non-subjective viewpoint, it's more like a big ball of wibbly-wobbly, timey-wimey stuff. Thinking in four dimensions is hard, so let's try two. Think of traveling forwards in space as north, and traveling through time as west. The faster you travel through space, the slower you travel through time as a result. If you're taking a northwestern direction, you aren't traveling as fast in the north or west directions as if you were going straight north or straight west. This theory has been supported by experiments. When atomic clocks are perfectly synchronized and one remains on Earth and the other flies around in a super fast jet, when the clocks are reunited, the one traveling in the jet was behind. Traveling faster through space actually slowed down its passage through time. Theoretically, if someone, say Santa, could travel faster than the speed of light relative to us, they could travel backwards in time. Even if Santa manages this time travel feat, Santa has a really long night. At 15 minutes per house, that would be around 285 years in Santa's time frame, which is well past the life expectancy of even a human with incredibly advanced healthcare. So, Let's consider other possibilities as well. None of our assumptions state that Santa must be one person. Santa could easily be a job title that multiple people have. In fact, given the vast resources and wide distribution network Santa has, this wouldn't be unrealistic. Redundancy is important in any operation of this size, and it would provide an explanation for all of the conflicting data we have on Santa. But how would the Santas be organized? How does one become a Santa? Oh, Jordan, okay, hold up. There's something you have, you've been missing, okay? Wait, Savvy Writes Books, do you have a theory about how Santa's giant worldwide corporation is structured? You're talking about Santa, but you're ignoring the very crucial element of this, which is, okay, Santa's giving out all these gifts for free, right? Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know about y'all watching, but I'm a business person and none of this makes any financial sense, okay? So, you know, in the business world, we say if it sounds like 
it's too good to be true, it probably is. It's probably a scam. So have you considered that maybe Santa is just a scammer all along? Um, no, I hadn't considered that. You hadn't that. considered that. Well, let me blow your mind today, okay? Because, listen, every year, right, Santa just somehow makes gifts appear under the tree. And we get it. We, we want the, the, all of Santa's marketing campaigns, all of his PR stuff wants you to think that it's because he's just a good, generous guy, right? But, you know, you watch every Christmas movie and the kid always believes in Santa and the parent always doesn't believe in Santa. So don't you always wonder, like, when the gifts appear in the morning, as they have supposedly been every year, like, why wouldn't the parents know that gifts they didn't buy appeared there, right? Like that's a huge plot hole. No one ever addresses it. And Wait. here's why. Because the parents knew about the gifts all along. Parents are buying into Santa's business guru pyramid scheme, okay? That's what's been going on this entire time. These gifts weren't for free. Santa just wants to make it look like that because it's good for his image. But you, you ever see a mall Santa, right? How are there so many mall Santas? How are there so many Santas you can go up to in the mall and they all claim that they're Santa, but the real Santa's up at the North Pole? Here's how. Because Santa's sitting at the top of the pyramid. The North Pole is like the... the the point at the top of the pyramid and then all the mall Santas are his downline. Then all the parents go up to the mall Santas and they buy gifts from the mall Santa and, and mall Santa gets a cut of their, the commission for it. And then the parents give the gifts to their kids. Parents actually lose money giving kids gifts every year. Is that why you have to write letters to Santa? You can't just buy Santa's gifts online. You have to get it from... Exactly, because you need to get it from your local Santa representative who is part of Santa's massive downline. Exactly, that's and that why. Would also be why Santa's always talking about the culture and the spirit of Christmas. Right. Focusing on the products. The products of Christmas don't really seem relevant. You never hear what these kids actually want. Exactly. You know, ever since I was a kid, when I was a little kid, I was like, I want Santa to give me a PlayStation. But like, does Sony really give Santa the rights to make a PlayStation? No, there's no workshop, dude. Santa's just, he's just drop shipping shit. So there's no real product <laughs> at the top of the pyramid. There's no real product, dude. It's parents paying money to the mall Santas, and they're taking a cut of the commission that the parents pay them, but then Santa's taking a little off the top every time, up at the top. Santa, Dude, Santa's just another Tony Robbins, Grant Cardone type. He goes up, he wants to make himself appear like he's jolly and sweet because you know, that's how, that, that's his toxic positivity. You know, I never really thought about it like that. So what you're saying, is that Santa's definitely real. Definitely. How could Santa not be real? Oh, well, obviously. Obviously, yeah. Right. No, that's ridiculous. The idea that he's not real is ridiculous. He's really just taking advantage of the capitalist lie of entrepreneurship for everyone and yeah. basically making this fake company where most people lose money selling the idea of a passive income and free presence. That's how all the mall Santas stay in business all the time. Cause there are so many mall Santas and then there's like, you know, Santas at all these events. There's just a million different Santas everywhere. Yeah, dude. Santa's just been a business guru the whole time. You didn't think he could do all that for free. It doesn't make sense. Where would Santa get the money to get the materials to make all the gifts from? He doesn't. He, he has people paying into his system. I trusted <laughs> you. Never trust a ho ho ho. Don't trust a ho. All right, thanks for having me on your channel, Jordan. I'm Savvy from Savvy Writes Books. I am an author and small business owner. My business, Forever Home Friends, produces picture books, plushies, toys, merch, and other items based on real rescue dogs and their journeys to getting adopted. We donate 10% of our profits to animal shelters. If you want to know more about us, you can visit foreverhomefriends.com. We got some fun new holiday packaging in, so maybe Santa, not business guru Santa, not physically impossible Santa, but like real good guy Santa can get some for his, for your kids for the holidays. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Don't forget to support small businesses. Thank you so much, Savvy Rights Books. Everybody, don't forget to support small businesses. Aster out. <laughs>
much for joining us here on Bad Astra. If you enjoyed watching, please like this video, leave a comment telling us what topic you'd like to see next month, and share it with everyone you know. Be sure to also subscribe and ring the notification bell so you never miss a new episode. And if you can't get enough of me, Eris, and Science Tommy, join our Patreon, where we post behind the scenes, deep dives, and other fun content. A special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters who make these videos possible. Astra out.